Undervolting Vega was one of the top requests on our user submitted to-do list for this card, and it's yielded some of the most interesting results and data sets. This feature benchmark shows how we can significantly reduce power consumption on Vega while yielding better performance from the FE card. Not even the same, just straight better performance, better power consumption, and better thermals. Before getting to that, this is brought to you by our Patreon backers at patreon.com slash gamersnexus who help us in funding these user requested benchmarks. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or if you prefer, you can grab our brand new shirt design, which has a link in the description below. So this benchmark was requested a lot for Vega because in past AMD card generations, like even the RX 500 Polaris refresh, it's been possible to undervolt the cards or reduce the voltage going to the core and achieve either the same or slightly better performance in terms of clock stability, while also potentially reducing power consumption as opposed to, for example, a straight plus 50% offset without undervoltage, in which scenario you end up just drawing a lot more power, stabilizing the frequency, but it's at the expense of extra power and extra heat because it's extra power. So that's why this was interesting to people, and it was interesting to us as well, hence running the test. But a few things here, just to get everyone on the same playing field, power target and voltage are uh, sort of tied at the hip, but they're really not the same thing. So you can increase power target and decrease voltage, and they're not really going to conflict with each other. What's happening is these two different items, power target limits how much power is permitted to go to the GPU. So that might be something like 20 to 21 amps in the stock state, for example. And then of course you have thermal targets as well, like 80 or 85C, which will limit you thermally. So you have two different variables there where you can be constrained thermally or constrained in power consumption or power availability to the card. So if you increase the fan RPM on this to something crazy like 100%, you eliminate that thermal restraint, but you now are facing a power constraint. So that's, uh, that's part one. Part two, voltage is what's supplied to the core in this case. Technically, you can change the memory voltage as well, but we're just looking at core voltage today. More voltage means more power consumption, uh, so that is problematic potentially if, one, you just don't want to draw as much power with really no need, and two, it means more heat. Uh, so in the stock state, we're actually allowing less power to go to the core because you're at a zero offset, so you're 100% power target or 100% power consumption as opposed to 150, for example. So you're allowing less power to go to the core and you're running, in this instance, a higher voltage than is necessary. AMD cards have DPM states. So they go, I think it starts at zero, but they go up through seven. And the seventh state is basically the highest boost possible. So out of box for this, that's 1600 megahertz. And out of box, the voltage is 1200 millivolts. So 1 1.2 volts. The next state down is 1528 MHz, and the voltage is a bit changed as well. And then below that, you start getting into the territory of 1440 MHz. So, in the initial reviews, when you saw people saying that the card wasn't sustaining 1600 MHz, it was probably 1440 to 1528, because those are the two options in the pre-configured DPM states in AMD's drivers and BIOS for the Vega card. And the result is that you end up with lower performance because the clock is throttling down to those two states. And again, it's only one or two reasons for this. It's either the power or the thermals. So undervolting is a way to solve some of that. Uh, and that's what we're getting into today. So talking methods and problems first, in case you want to do this, you should be aware of these things. First of all, problems. Wattman is not perfect. It has a lot of bugs. Some people have not run into the same ones that we are but that's because they're doing things differently. If, for example, you go in uh, for the overclocking and voltage tools, and you set them all to the same number, so 1600, one through seven, and 1200, one through seven, then we have seen, especially with other changes in there like fan speeds, uh, issues where HBM drops to 500 megahertz. And that will really hurt your performance. So be aware of that, basically, I don't know the exact answer as to when HBM2 drops to 500 megahertz. It just seems to kind of happen as you're tweaking stuff in there, and I'm not sure which change causes it. But just be aware that it can happen. So if you go in with a plan to undervolt like this, just keep an eye on HBM speeds after you're done to make sure you haven't actually worsened performance. Uh, though your power consumption would probably be a bit better. Um, so that's one thing to be aware of. Watt tool recommended to me by Buildzoid 
is pretty good, but has a lot of problems as well. It has the same 500 megahertz memory bug, and it seems to be caused by the same things. But Watt Tool is pretty easy to work with if you prefer that. Uh, and then finally, the fan targets are wrong. So you can go in and set a fan target in Wattman or Watt Tool of, say, 3400 RPM, and it'll add a couple hundred RPM on top of that. So it'll go up to like 3700, for example. Close enough, though. Close enough to use, uh, but just something to be aware of. And then finally, for our testing, we have three configurations to look at primarily. One is stock Vega, so zero changes at all after a driver install. The second one is stock Vega with a plus 50% power target and a fixed fan speed, 3400 RPM in Wattman, which is like 3700 in reality. So the important part, plus 50% on the power. And then the last one is stock Vega in this configuration, plus 50% power, undervolted to whatever was the most stable, and with the fan speed also at 3400. So stock with plus 50%, and stock with plus 50% undervolted are going to be directly comparable thermally, whereas the stock one will not be because it regulates its own RPM, and so will be different. Uh, so that's the setting we're using. This will allow us to ensure that we're not hitting a power wall, ensure we're not hitting a thermal wall, and leave us with an understanding of how much voltage is required to remain stable. For our voltages, we tried a lot of them. 1080 just wasn't going to cut it. 1080 millivolts, not good enough. We then tried 1090 millivolts, down from 1200, mind you. And 1090 was stable in a lot of the titles. It was stable in Firestrike, basically ad infinitum. Uh, it was not stable in For Honor. So For Honor, we had to actually go up to as high as 1120 millivolts. And then some other games required 1100 or 1090. So it's not perfect. Basically, again, if you're planning to do this, be aware of that. You will either have to take the highest stable voltage, like 1120, for example, in our case, for all titles, uh, or you'll have to get used to the idea of changing voltage for each application or setting profiles, I suppose, you can do as well. Uh, so be aware of all of that. But we can get into the charts now. Starting with current draw at the PCIe cables only, not counting the PCIe slot, the completely stock card starts off drawing about 268 watts, but as we approach the 400 second mark, the card starts spiking hard between 17.7 amps and 23 amps. This behavior correlates with clock throttling, which we'll show in a moment, and is precisely why we've been saying that Vega FE Air can't hold its advertised 1600 MHz boost clock out of the box. Its power limit and cooler are simply insufficient. The cooler can do it if exiting the fan profile and going to high DPAs with your own fan profile, but this is where it sits out of box. That gives us our baseline. The next move is to get the frequency to hit 1600 MHz constantly, so we increase the power target by 50% and set a fixed fan speed to solve for the thermal limit, absolving Vega of both of its main limitations anyway at once. The red line is the result. A new problem emerges. Thermals and frequency are now under control, but the PCIe cable from the power supply is putting out 30 amps at the time, averaging about 28 to 29 amps overall. That's about 344 to 370 watts down the PCIe cables, and is going to start generating more heat in the card as a result, but is also just kind of wasteful power consumption. Finally, our undervolted line emerges. The blue line represents an undervolt of negative 110 millivolts, so we've dropped from 1200 to 1090 millivolts. Current is now 23 amps for power consumption of 283 watts at the PCIe cables. That's about 15 watts more than the stock setup that struggled to maintain 1600 megahertz, about 87 watts lower than the power offset setup that sustains 1600 megahertz successfully, and should lower thermals as well. Let's go to that chart. Our orange line again represents the stock auto configuration, which runs a fan curve that isn't aggressive enough, a voltage that's too high, and a power budget that's too low. It's the worst of everything. The result is constantly hitting the thermal limit and potentially throttling, well, definitely throttling, observed at the 85C mark, though there are a few spikes to 90C, it tends to stick at 85. Applying a 50% power offset and fixing the frequency to 1600 MHz properly, temperatures are about 73 Celsius now, but the fan is 70% to control for the thermal variable for undervolting. So noise levels are somewhat unbearable at 60 dBA versus the auto noise level of roughly 50 dBA, but there's room to drop the fan speed with a lower voltage because less heat is generated as less power is consumed. We just stuck with these numbers because we really wanted to make sure there was no thermal limitations that would mess up our undervolting tests. 
The more appropriate comparison would be our blue line versus our red line, as these two are tested with the same settings aside from just one variable, voltage to the core. The fan speed's the same, the 50% power offset is the same, and the voltage is the only difference at a 110 millivolt reduction on the undervolted card, where we perform at 63 to 66 Celsius for about a 7 to 10 Celsius reduction from the card operating at 1200 millivolts. That's pretty good so far. The last question is of frequency. Plotting frequency, the orange line shows the stock out-of-box configuration for the Vega Frontier Edition air-cooled card. We're throttling hard and only rarely achieving 1600 MHz. The regularity of which 1600 MHz is achieved diminishes significantly as time goes on largely due to thermal constraints and a default fan curve. We tend to be operating at DPM power state five to six rather than state seven, which would give us full performance. The red and blue lines converge on this chart as increasing the power target and removing the thermal limit gives us a perfectly flat 1600 megahertz curve closer to what's advertised on the box. That said, the red line is pulling 344 to 370 watts through the PCIe cable, so that's a little aggressive and may not be worth the power and thermal load over stock. Undervolting, however, permits 1600 MHz to remain possible, 50% power offset possible, and thus permitting 1600 MHz, and still draws 87 watts less power than the red line, with only 15 watts more than the orange line. That's pretty good trade. So that proves the theory and shows that undervolting is working, at least once you learn how to deal with the applications and their bugs, and it looks good so far. Now, obviously, a maintained 1600 MHz or sustained versus 1440 to 1528 fluctuating is going to perform better. But just to really drive it home, we're gonna perform a few benchmarks on 3D Mark, Ghost Recon, and Doom. And a couple extras will be in the article linked below, but the point isn't to re-benchmark the entire test suite. We're just gonna give you a, a worst case, a best case, and then a synthetic test so that there's a, a pretty widespread of what undervolting does in the real world. Now, additionally, we are leaving out spec view perf. Again, not really the point of this. If you want spec view perf performance numbers, check our hybrid Vega card video with the results, as that has the very top end of spec view perf performance once this thing is overclocked as far as we could get this particular card. Firestrike Ultra starts us out. The Vega FE Air Card, when completely stock, ran a graphics score of 4906 with our 50% power offset cards both operating at around 5370 graphics score. This includes the undervolted card, which manages about a 9 to 10% performance uplift over the stock card. Here's the crazy thing. Again, we're not overclocking to achieve this. All we're doing is making more power available while reducing the voltage which nets a marginal power consumption spike at the trade of more consistent and faster frame times. That's a pretty good trade for 15 watts and is far better than the 87 watts of the power offset without undervolting card that we did. For point of reference, our hybrid FE overclock performed at 57.74, which is 7% faster than the undervolted card, kind of puts into perspective just how far undervolting and overpowering will get you to begin with. TimeSpy gives us a gain of about 7.6% from the undervolted card over the stock card, with our hybrid OC gaining another 9.6% on top of that additionally, though drawing significantly more power at around 33 amps. We have a few more Firestrike charts in the article linked in the description below if those interest you. As for games, some experienced instability at 1090 millivolts and had to be moved up to 1100. For Honor was particularly unstable and required a core voltage of about 1120 millivolts. So these aren't perfect and can't all sustain at 1090, but we've got a spread and overall you're looking at better performance versus stock anyway. Let's look at Ghost Recon first. At 4K and with very high settings, the undervolted AMD Vega Air Card performed at 41 FPS average with lows close by at 37 and 36. The stock card with no modifications whatsoever operated at 37.7 FPS average, resulting in a performance uplift of 8.8% from the stock card. This uplift is because the stock card cannot maintain 1600 MHz without a power offset. But again, a power offset without over voltage increases your power consumption by 80 to 90 watts, thereby increasing thermals that the card deals with. This undervolting and overpowering appears to be the best approach to extracting more performance, as we've done here. With Doom using Vulkan Async Compute, which is enabled without anti-aliasing these days, and rendered at 4K, the Vega undervolted card operates at 71.6 FPS average with low end frame times also improved over the stock card. Our average FPS improvement is about 11.5% in Doom, following the trend of Doom being a somewhat best case scenario for AMD on a routine basis. 
The performance uplift is tremendous here when considering our minimal power consumption increase and better overall control of the card. So that should hopefully answer at least most of the question of under voltage on Vega FE. Thank you for the suggestion for that one. A few notes here for the end of this. First of all, uh, obviously this isn't a perfect solution no matter what. 1090 millivolts is great, but it doesn't work everywhere. So you've got to add according to whatever the software demands. You have to add the power consumption to account for that difference. Separately, uh, at this point, it's really kind of like buying a project car. Uh, if you're doing these kinds of modifications, hopefully it's because you enjoy them, because otherwise you're dealing with buggy software that'll set you back until you figure out its weird kinks and anomalies. And most of those, just to save you time, seem to be if you set DPM states one through seven all to be the same frequency and voltage, which is not an issue on the other cards, but is on this one because of some weird fury leftover code. But once you're past that, uh, you still have an issue of tweaking the voltage to be its minimum voltage required for stability for each application. If that's not appealing, then you, you're either left with run at stock or run it with the, the, the highest lowest voltage possible to sustain everything. So below stock, but maybe something like 1120 to 1140 millivolts rather than 1200. At that point, you're not really saving a whole lot. It's certainly better than 1200 when it's not needed but it would, it would make sure that pretty much every application works with the thing. Another note, not all GPUs are the same. Ours may undervolt better or worse than others, including the ones that you buy. So keep that in mind too. Probably don't just copy the, the numbers we got because it might not work on yours. Now, as for why this is the case, it's kind of, it's weird. This is something that is somewhat consistent with AMD GPUs lately, where you can undervolt them and improve performance in at least one aspect. And as for why that would be the case, I, my assumption would be that this is something where AMD is picking a voltage that they know will work and keep the card from crashing because that's what happens if your voltage goes too low uh, on all of their silicon. So it might just be some kind of safe net of, we know 1200 will keep all these things afloat in all applications, so we're just going to set it here. Whereas if you're fine tuning the thing, you have a lot more room to play, but no company is going to do that. So the other option is they didn't have enough time to test it and they picked the highest uh, voltage that they could set without being ridiculous and knew that it would work and keep things stable, at which point it needed more time and testing. But uh, not really sure which is the, the reason for the higher voltage than necessary, but either way, you have room if you buy either this, which probably no one in our audience should buy, or RX Vega, which is more likely to be a viable candidate for you, it's gonna apply there too. So you have room with the Vega architecture and cards to potentially undervolt and improve performance. Now, RX Vega is not out yet. We'll test it. We'll see if we can undervolt that one as well. And if they've set the same conservatively high voltage curve, volt frequency curve on that card as this one, then there might be room for power consumption reduction on RX Vega, but all of that is out in the future. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to patreon.com slash gamers to help us out directly. And then we also have our new shirt design, which is the GN Anniversary Edition shirt. We'll have a direct link to that in the description below, or you can go to gamersnexus.squarespace.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.